Hello everyone, hope you're having a fantastic day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to cover some more of the worst restaurants to be featured on Kitchen Nightmares and review how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys. Charella's Ristorante For this season 5 episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to Charella's Ristorante in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to rescue it from closure. Originally, Charella's was located in New Jersey and owned by Dina DeFino's parents until it would eventually close down. Hoping to capitalize on the first restaurant's success, Dina decided to open one up of her own with the help of her partner Tommy. Things didn't exactly go as planned though, since the restaurant was only burning money from the start, making it hard to pay the bills. Not knowing how to move forward, the couple called out to Ramsay and his team for some much needed guidance. Upon his eventual arrival, the famous chef seems to be impressed with how quaint the restaurant is. Meeting with both of the owners, they admit that they don't agree on how to run the business, but equally think that the food is amazing. Wanting to put this claim to the test, Ramsay sits down and scans through the menu, which has a lot of veal and chicken dishes that are named after famous people slash family members. Ordering the veal Sinatra, which is too chewy and lacks texture, steak Sarah Ann that is messy and practically raw, and the land and sea Cherie, which is overcooked and bland, Ramsay is simply disappointed. Heading into the kitchen to confront the staff, the head chef Felipe expresses that he's been working there for over 5 years but isn't allowed to change the dated food. Blaming the owners for this issue, Ramsay points out that the menu they inherited was set up for failure. While Tommy passionately disagrees with the Kitchen Nightmares host's remarks, Ramsay tells him that he's in denial. Observing the dinner service later on, the famous chef is shocked to see that Tommy is waiting and that there isn't an expediter. Regardless, the food is still sent out at a fast rate, but is sent back just as fast since the customers were unhappy with the quality. Tasting the food that was sent back, Ramsay is not impressed and forces Tommy to try some for himself. Getting so incredibly embarrassed by what he tasted, Tommy immediately leaves the kitchen to go hide in the basement. What's more, complaints keep coming in about the food being too oily, greasy, watery, and inedible, making the service a complete disaster. Fast forward to the end of the episode after Ramsay finally convinces the stubborn owners that their food is awful and that change is necessary for the restaurant's success, he finally moves into the renovations. After revamping the restaurant's overall aesthetic, updating the menu, and training the staff, Chirellas was given the second chance it needed. Post Kitchen Nightmares, it seems like the restaurant received mostly positive reviews on Yelp and TripAdvisor, with many praising the food but others complaining about the service quality. Returning over a year later, Ramsay was impressed to see that the business was up by 20% and that the couple seemed happier overall. Unfortunately, Chirellas ended up closing down in June of 2015 since they were no longer able to afford rent. Apparently, since their lease had expired, the landlord decided he wanted to increase their rent, but it was going to be too unreasonable, so they decided to shut things down. In 2017, a cafe called Rival Bros Coffee opened up in its place, which has pretty great reviews thus far. Zocalo In yet another season 5 episode, Gordon Ramsay decides to pay a visit to a failing restaurant called Zocalo in hopes of bringing it back on its feet. Owned by a married couple named Greg and Mary Russell, they purchased the business back in 2008 after meeting each other while working in the restaurant. Assuming that running the business would be a piece of cake, they soon learned that they were sorely mistaken. Greg was forced to work 7 days a week to keep things afloat since Mary comes in 3 times at most and is extremely critical to everyone around her. She often bickers with her husband as well which is not only distracting to the staff but causes Greg a lot of stress. Considering the fact that their business as well as their relationship was at stake, the couple called out to Ramsay for some help. When he finally arrives, he sits down with the owners who express that they're barely making 7 to 8 grand a week and are $750,000 in debt. Additionally, Greg points out that he wakes up at 5am every day, gets to bed at midnight, and hasn't taken a break or vacation in over a year, while Mary doesn't have much to say about her workload. Wanting to test out the food, he asks his server Maria what she recommends, and she reveals that she's never eaten at the restaurant due to the high prices, so she wouldn't know. Deciding on getting queso fundido, which was greasy, chile releno, that looked weird and spongy, cochinita pibil, that was bland, and molcajete, which tasted disgusting, the famous chef was left feeling unimpressed. Heading into the kitchen to confront the owner about his cooking, he's seemingly devastated by Ramsay's feedback, but admits that he isn't the best cook. Additionally, Ramsay highlights that the prices are way too high and are just going to push customers away. Returning later on, the famous chef notices that Greg tries to do everything by himself and refuses any help from the staff. What's more, most of the food sent out is microwaved, so it takes very long for each dish to reach the customer's table. Mary makes things even slower by uselessly coming into the kitchen and causing problems with everyone. The following day, Ramsay comes in hoping to tackle a very important issue, being Greg and Mary's relationship. Asking Greg to watch through a monitor as he chats with his wife and two daughters who also work at the restaurant, they have a lot to say. For one, they think he shuts down, is no longer expressive, and that things used to be a lot happier before they were in the restaurant business. 
Ramsey tells him that they aren't supporting Greg enough, which is the main reason why he's under so much pressure. Bringing the co-owner into the conversation, Mary expresses that no matter how much she nags him, she still loves him dearly. Feeling ready to move into the renovations, Ramsey starts by updating the menu with delicious food, gives the kitchen new equipment, and revamps the dining room's aesthetic. Upon their eventual relaunch, everything went pretty well, other than the fact that Mary temporarily reverted back to her naggy self. Weeks after the taping of this episode, the restaurant was running a lot smoother than in the past since Greg and Mary were seemingly doing better. They did keep up with Ramsey's updated menu, but something must have gone wrong since many reviewers complained about the poor food and service quality. Ultimately, the restaurant was set to temporarily close down in January of 2013 for the holidays, but it just never reopened. Once Zucala was closed down for good, Greg decided to divorce Mary and married a waitress featured in the episode named Maria. Currently speaking, Greg works as a manager at the Walrus Oyster and Ale House, and we truly hope he's happier. The Greek at the Harbor As our final entry, we're going to discuss a restaurant that Gordon Ramsay decided to rescue called The Greek at the Harbor. Owned by Makis and his wife Lynn, they've been running the restaurant since 1994 and were met with great success. Though after 17 long years of hard work, Makis has become extremely tired which is the reason why the restaurant's standards and customer base have dropped significantly. The owner's son, Aris, wants to try and turn things around, but Makis isn't ready nor willing to listen to him. Months away from closure, the owners decide to put the fate of their restaurant into the hands of a successful man like Ramsey. Arriving later on, the famous chef is impressed to see that the surrounding area is pretty busy, which means that they can easily get customers if they play their cards right. Meeting with the owners and their son, the famous chef is shocked to find out that Makis has been working for 17 years straight and hasn't had one break day. When asked about the food, Makis confidently gives it a 10 out of 10 since they supposedly follow authentic Greek recipes. Skeptical about his rating, Ramsey decides to order some food starting with some calamari which was very greasy, meatballs that were cold, a falafel that was flat, and moussaka that tasted rancid. The famous chef labels the food as an embarrassment to Greece. Returning later on for the dinner service, the famous chef is disappointed to find out that everything they serve is pre-cooked and reheated. While the food is being sent out quickly, the patrons send it right back since most of it is either raw or just very cold. Following the awful service, Ramsey analyzes the food that was sent back and is ruthless about how nasty the food is. The following day, the Kitchen Nightmares host questions Lynn on why her husband won't relinquish control over to Aris when he's clearly done with running the business. Apparently, Aris was very disrespectful to his parents at his graduation, claiming that he would make something of his life rather than work at the restaurant. Hoping to mend any tensions between the family, Ramsey sits down with all three of them and gets them to talk things out. Supposedly, Aris wasn't aware that his statement affected their relationship that bad, but apologizes for his insensitive words and promises to become more involved. Considering that the family was now on the same page, Ramsey was finally able to move into the renovation phase. Finally, after giving the staff a little pep talk, the Greek at the harbor was finally ready to relaunch. Post Kitchen Nightmares, the restaurant seems to be doing better than ever and is constantly packed. Thanks to their improved standards, the business rocks a solid 3.5 stars on Yelp across 550 plus reviews and is still open to this day. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.